there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Grisai products from Grisai Artist. And these, this is a company that is, uh, I guess, under the Color Pencil magazine. And they come out with a set of color pencils, a set of 72 color pencils, as well as these uh, different art kits. And I will put their website in the video description if you want to check it out. I think I have a coupon code too that I can... Um, share with you. I'm not sure if it's for all products or just the blender or what, but um, they have a series of lessons and the lessons come with a like a grayscale painting or, or a coloring sheet on Stonehenge paper and then you would color over them with their grisaille pencils and I believe they have online classes to go with them. I'm not sure if they come with every kit. Every kit has like a photograph of the finished picture and the coloring sheet and the pencils. So it's kind of fun if you're learning kind of realistic color pencil techniques. It kind of gives you a little bit of a of a um, structure to start off with. I haven't done those, but I'll be reviewing the pencils and blender. And I have three pencils. So, ba so grain of salt here. Um, I've got uh, primary, primary color pencils here and I've got one blender and I've got the Stonehenge, a little pad of the Stonehenge paper. So that's what I'll be basing my review on. Um, there, like I said, there are more colored pencils in the line and they have those other kits. So the kits are printed on the Stonehenge paper, which is why I drew this little lollipop on here and then this is just art creation paper because I was kind of playing around with that and I wanted to see what I could do with just three colors and uh, they work pretty well. I did swatch these out compared to Prismacolor and a couple other brands of pencils that I had. These reminded me the most of the Arteza pencils. A set of 72 of these Grisaille pencils are $49 I believe, 50 bucks and then they've opened stock for 99 cents a piece so um, that's nice. You can buy the colors that you want. The leads are nice and thick. They're 3.8 um, millimeter and they appear to be pretty well centered. They're hexagonal so they shouldn't go rolling too far off of your table and um, they're supposed to work well with solvents as well as the blender. So I used a little blender pencil here on both of these just to kind of blend my colors together. Like I said I get the three colors so I mix the orange and the green and the gray with those three colors. Uh, same here. And I did use an electric eraser to erase out some highlights and uh, to kind of um, erase there after using the blender to blend. I do want to try um, some solvents with these and I'm also going to compare the blender from the four other blenders I own and then uh, that's going to conclude the review. Um, and basically just want to kind of, yeah, it's pretty easy. When you got three pencils, three colors to work with. You can do a review pretty quickly, I think. Um, I'm just going to move this out of the way. I had the under there to kind of uh, weight it. So the first thing I want to do is um, try, then I'll try uh, Gamzol first. I'll do the Gamzol on this and I'll do the clear marker on that one. I just have my Gamzol in a uh, jar with cotton ball so I don't get too much. And I've already used the blender pencil here. So basically what I want to do is maybe even just brighten things up a little bit. I find I don't use blender pencils too often and the reason for that is that I find that sometimes it can add a bit of a wax bloom because you are blending with like a hard uh, wax that may have a little bit of a grit in it. This should be a little more curved there. Kind of botch that, uh, that drawing a little bit but... I also want to blend on the the stick because um, I had to put those three colors together to try to get kind of a grayish color. Oh yeah, they're, it's blending really well with the odor, odorless mineral spirits. I didn't feel like the the pencils felt as pigmented as my Prismacolors, but they did, but they were quite soft like a Prismacolor, but pigment wise they've really felt like, a, like the Arteza pencils. Um, so if you have those there and you like those, these are very similar. I don't know how easy it would be to follow along with their lessons if you didn't have their pencils though, so that's something to um, to consider. But yeah, the solvent worked well there. Um, I'm going to try the clear blender in this sketchbook here. Plus I'm also getting ready to review this sketchbook, which I think is just a little too slick for colored pencils, but, um, but still, I, I like to throw a bunch of things out of sketchbook and see how it's going to, how it's going to cope. And I think I'll just kind of start in with these lighter areas. I have a lot of uh, pigment. 
I had to, I feel like I had to put down a lot of pencil because um, I really wanted vibrant colors and the paper, the paper's so slick, it was kind of, um, kind of challenging. I am going to go in with a fine liner and a gel pen on this after I do this review. I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to show you just the pencils and the blending pencil without con contaminating it with other products, just to be as fair as I could. But I think the price point on the pencils is really good, especially if you want to, if you want to take those classes, it's not, you know, it's not that expensive to get the pencils. The classes range from, I think around 20 bucks to 50, whether you're get, just getting the uh, class with the written instruction or you're getting the online class as well. I saw that Lisa from Lacry Fine Art does one of the classes and she's an excellent teacher. She's a nice woman too. I know her. I, well, I virtually know her. She's, uh, she's always been very, very nice to me. Uh, although I try not to let any sort of bias color my reviews, but it is like nice to know the company that this company keeps because you know, that's, uh, that's important too. If, if they were teaming up with somebody that I didn't trust, I would be like, hmm, <laughs> you know, I like, oh, she, I don't know how many classes she does. I saw that she did one of them there. So it kind of thought that was cool. Okay. That seems to be working fine. I'm curious about this paper. Oh, it's not even bleeding through the paper. That's nice. Um, but sometimes I, I like to do my fine lining last a lot of times, and that can be a problem over colored pencils. So by doing the uh, the clear marker, it'll kind of break down the wax and remove some of it. So my fine liner and gel pen will stick a little bit better. And this is just in a sketchbook. So, you know, using a gel pen, I'm not worried about longevity in my sketchbook so much. And I don't know light fastness on these pencils. They are pretty affordable, so I wouldn't expect they'd be super light fast. Oh yeah, I got my little swatches here. I could uh, go over them. Oh, yep. It's definitely picking up the color, so i clean that off. I was able to get a good green and a good orange. The purple is okay, but generally you're probably not going to be doing a whole, a whole page and just three pencils, but I wanted to, I wanted to see if I could. All right. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now let's test out our blender pencil a bit. Like I said, I did use the blender pencil on these these two pictures, um, but let's try it against some other blenders. I'm just gonna pull out one of these. These are like artist trading card sizes. I think that's kind of cool. It'd be fun to do some um, some stuff on that. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm just trying to think, how can I do this so I can have four? I need to have five. Um, I need to have five, enough to do five columns. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to layer up some pencils here. I want to make sure I have enough that I can overlap. And I'm not using a ton of pressure, which is nice. I'm just kind of uh, Ah, laying it down. I should probably tape this down because it wants to dance around on me. I want to leave a strip of the color just kind of on its own and I want to also be able to do a mix. Ooh, look at that green. Isn't that nice? I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of this and then just do a striper right over it, over the bottom so we can get the the purple as well. The, that gives you more of like a muted color because the red's a little bit on the warm side and the blue's a little bit on the cool side so you've got two colors that aren't really destined to make a good purple. And let's do another layer up here. That way when we go over with the blender we can really make sure we have enough under there to get good color. There's a little more pressure as I go over the red. This is like not how you necessarily color anything. I'm just, I just want to um, have enough down there to do the blender. 
And actually, the reason I don't use a blender too much is because it can lighten or make your color a little hazy. A lot of times I will just use a lighter version of that color, or if I'm, I'm blending and I'm taking it to a highlight, I'll use a lighter version. If I'm blending and taking it into a shadow, I'll use a darker version. But there's so many products out there because we all like different things. All right, so we've got our we got our little thing here. I'm gonna start off with the uh, the Grisai blender, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna color over pretty firmly. I don't also don't really love the feeling of this. I'm gonna bring it out a little bit more. So, what the blender does is it squishes the colors together and it gets rid of the grain. You can see that there, it has gotten rid of the grain. Flattened down the tooth of the paper a little bit. Uh, so I'm just gonna put these in the order which I use them. So now I'm gonna do a Lyra. Well, you know what? I will tell you what, that Grisai one did merge the colors a lot better than the Lyra. This one feels harder. It feels a little smoother, like it doesn't have the grit to it. But it's it's not uh, it's not blending. I'm still seeing gray in there. Huh. All right. Next up, we'll do the Koinor blender. This one came in my uh, I don't know if I've ever used it. It came with my Tritone pencils. This one is blending better than the Lyra. It's also snapping though. So that one, this one's blending, this, this Koi Nora one's blending pretty well. One, two, three, nine, better than two. I don't know if it's quite as good as the first one. Let's do our tried and true Prisma color. That's probably the one that I would use. That's what that, that blender reminded me of. Yeah, that, that one does feel the most like a Prismacolor blender, I would say. That's a Prismacolor. I like the, I like the Prismacolor, but it could just be because I'm more used to it. And last but not least, we have a uh, fan favorite with the Full Blender by Karen Dosh. Which feels silkier. I like the feeling of it better, but I don't think it's blending as well as the uh, Prismacolor or the um, or the Grisai one. Hmm. Well, it's a Prismacolor. That's the Splen... The, is it the Full Blender? The Karen Dosh Full Blender? I guess it's pretty similar. Yeah. Actually, with the red, it looks like the, the Karen Dosh blends a little bit better. All right, now I'm going to go back to our Grisai one. Now that I've tried all of them, I want to have this one with fresh. Hmm. I would say that this feels most similar to a Prismacolor or a Karen Dosh Full Blender. I'm going to try the Prismacolor one more time because, yeah, I would say it feels the most like a Prismacolor. But you know what? When I look at Prismacolor, the uh, Karen Dosh, the Lila and Prism, uh, Lyra and Prismacolor, oh my gosh, Prismacolor, Karen Dosh, the Grease Eye and the Prisma color again, those four I feel to be very, very comparable. I felt like the, just using them, the Karen Dosh one felt a little bit smoother, but the, um, the Prisma color and the Grease Eye both felt that, like that they had that little bit of hard, hardness and grit to it, so it like drags a little bit more. Um, so a little bit less smooth than the Karen Dosh, but I would say the, the Karen Dosh, the Prismacolor, and the Grisai were all very similar and performed the best, although feel-wise it's almost identical to a Prismacolor, in my opinion. Um, the shape is different, The uh, and it looks it looks like the, the Karen Dosh is probably a better buying for your bucks. It's all blender pencil and you don't need to sharpen it unless you need the point. Um, 
the Prisma color almost looks like it might be a touch smaller. My Prisma color blender is not as well centered as the Grisai one. The Grisai is a hexagonal barrel, but um, for what's in it, it, they feel very similar. So if you like, I would say if you like the Prisma color and the Karandash, you will like the Grisai one as well. So I'll maybe just see how they're how they uh, how they're priced out. I like how the uh, the finish is pretty matte. It's pretty much the same. This the whatever I used the third one, which was oh that was the um, the Koinor left a more of a waxy sheen. It also looks a little more transparent, but it definitely is more reflective. So that's something to consider. Actually, no, that was the that was the second one. That was the Lyra. That was the Rembrandt uh, Splendor Blender that was the most shiny. The other ones were much more matte. So avoid the Lyra if you don't want shiny. But Lyra is oil based. So maybe that's why these pencils say they are a combination of oil-based and wax-based pencils. Generally, your oil-based pencils are more translucent. And your wax-based pencils are a little bit more opaque because they have a little bit of a haziness from the wax. Uh, these are all numbered and named. And so like if you need to order an open stock, it's easy to do so. And the price is pretty good. I have no idea. There's no light fast information on the pencils. I imagine they're a Chinese pencil, but I can't say for sure because I don't see that information anywhere on the packaging that I have and I couldn't find it on the website. Maybe I missed it, but it does kind of seem like it's probably a, um, a private labeled product out of China, uh, but it doesn't make it bad. I mean, there's lots of decent pencils that I've tried over from China that have worked out pretty well. But even on this paper that's not really designed for colored pencils, it worked pretty well, which is just those three colors there. And then it worked much better on the Stonehenge because it's just got a little bit more grip and a little bit more uh, takes the pencil a little bit better. But hey, I say if you're curious about this and you want to give it a try, maybe you're interested in their lessons, try a lesson. They're not that expensive. Um, the pencils aren't that expensive. When you buy the lesson, you can get the pack of pen the pencils that ne are needed for the lesson. They only take like, I don't know, 10 or 12 pencils per lesson, which is nice. So it must show you how to blend and layer. Like I said, I haven't tried the lessons, but they must be showing you how to blend and layer and get the most uh, bang for your buck on the pencils. And um, uh, that sounds good to me. But uh, I can vouch the pencils, the, the paper quality that they're using and the pencils are nice. And the blenders are comparable to Prismacolor or Caran d'Ache. So there you have it. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you've tried these pencils or you have the full line of pencils and you want to share your, your opinion on them, I would love to hear it. And I'm sure that would help other people that are considering uh, buying these pencils as well. Like I said, the I will put the link in the video description below. It is Grisai, grisai.com, if you want some more information. And... This is what the little blender package looks like. I'm not sure what the blenders cost. I should look that up. Let's let's look accessories. Let's see. But yeah, I, I don't find that like anytime I've used the blending products, blenders, they have not uh, worn down very quick. So the, the blending pencils are $12.99. Um, so that is kind of pricey for a blender. It's, it's $12.99 for two. That does seem a little bit expensive, but you know, you can use a different brand, I guess. Uh, Cause I think the Prismacolor is only a couple bucks a piece. But oh yeah, they have solvent, they have pencil cases, they have all sorts of stuff on there, on their website. But there you have it. Um, I will probably just stick these in with my Prismacolors cause there's only three of them. And I keep my Prismacolors right next to my, uh, to my desk. And I think they'll work with those just fine. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.